Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Bartender receives complaints about his generous pours. In retaliation, he serves a customer exactly one shot of rum, implying the ice contains enough liquor. The second story. Fake manager attempts to lecture me before termination. I receive my next job offer whilst he waits to continue. The third story. Tenant faces a controlling landlord who suddenly evicts them. Tenant runs up excessive utility bills while the landlord is away. The first story is... Reception guest complained about his drink. Got an SH1. I used to bartend at wedding receptions when I was in my early to mid-twenties. All our liquor had the caps that stopped the flow after pouring out exactly one shot. My head bartender trained me to always give a little extra pour with a wink, because it cost us virtually nothing and people would tip us better. This wedding had a cash bar. Pretty inexpensive. Less than $10 a drink. But if you're drinking all night, it adds up. A middle-aged guy is ordering a lot of Captain and Cokes. Every time he comes back, I take his glass, dump it, fill it with fresh ice and Coke, and give it a little extra pour of rum. I probably served him five to six drinks in the first couple of hours. After the last drink, my head bartender pulled me aside and said the guy was talking SH about me. What? I've been nothing but nice. Apparently, he was one of those dudes who thinks the liquor is stored in the ice, and I was dumping his precious melting ice cubes. Never mind the generous pour. So when he comes back, I start making his drink right away. I don't dump the ice, I pour the coke, and I pour exactly one shot of rum. He looks at me and says condescendingly, Can I get some rum with that coke? I look him dead in the eye and say, I'm sure there's plenty in your ice, sir. Dude looks crestfallen. Didn't be about me the rest of the night, though. The next story is, So you want to fire me? Excuse me while I accept my new job. I was hired as a developer by a tiny company that was just brought by a large media company. TV, radio, newspaper, internet. I was just let go of a job, in an unfortunate situation, and the guy who hired me was okay great on the interview. The prospect of working for a bigger company made me jump on blind refusing other opportunities. Big mistake. At first it was nothing out of the ordinary. I've worked in small companies and didn't mind small offices. When the interview happened, the office had ongoing renovations, but when I arrived, they indeed changed the whole office and the meeting room, on which I was interviewed on, was gone to make room for two desks. After that, on the first two days of working there, I noticed a faint smell of sewage that grew stronger, as the day went by that happened every day for the three months I was there. It was so bad they had a little plug that went in the outlet, like this Febreze plug but industrial grade, and I learned that happened for years there. But the first real sign of things going south was when I noticed the documentation I gave them was taking longer than expected to come back. When I asked about it, the manager attributed this to corporate bureaucracy. They didn't have before being incorporated. That my docs went out of state, etc. Turns out he told me to start working before the main company allowed as HR only hired on the first week of the month. For all intents and purposes, I worked the first 15 days illegally, without being told. But since he paid me on cash in time, I didn't make much of it at the time. Then, after about a month of working, I learned the amount of SH I had to dive into. Turns out the company that brought the one I was working for was not doing great, and was downsizing exactly the areas we were working for. It was in the news. They already sold one website, closed down another, and were moving the rest of their web presence maintenance to the company they brought, because it was cheaper. That included the dismissal of the whole team, that worked in the products we were supposed to maintain, without so much as a Skype meeting. They were on another state, probably because of this manager arrogance. After I learned that, we were told by my manager that the director would pay us a visit. The guy was having a breakdown, with good reason because the office we were into literally smelled of SH half the day. The director arrived and the manager proceeded to tell him they were still renovating the office and having plumbing issues. Oh, and they proceeded to have a meeting right there among the development team. There, the manager dude made a real effort to make an impression on the director. A man in his early 30 wearing jeans and a Hollister shirt that was not giving enough. Everybody was hearing that pathetic exchange, and I see the guy who hired me look at me sideways and comment something along, and don't worry about extra costs, as we have two developers and this project should be finished by the end of the month. I was with headphones on, but since I generally listen to podcasts and don't take them off when the episode ends, I was fully aware of what he was saying. As to add insult to injury after the meeting, this guy gives me an upgraded computer, 
a Dell notebook with a Celeron processor. That was it. So you hire me in the end of the year to fire me just before Christmas. Yeah, I'll give this in a month to you, and then some. So the project that was supposed to be done by end of November was delayed after Christmas. I wrote the most convoluted and SH Java code I could, and since I was the only one who coded Java there, he couldn't do a thing. We were mid-January. They had to give me two weeks of paid vacation as it was on the contract. And we learned that the director who visited us was not in the team anymore. Another director was assigned, and this one wouldn't have any of that SH. He calls the manager and asks about my project. The guy obviously tries to throw me in the fire. Director tells him to call me and I proceed to explain how the project was late, because we have no access to anything from the old team. Truth. And nobody could help us over the phone. My manager's excuse. So the new director asks my manager, why haven't you flew Joni over here? And I merely say, I'd be glad. The next day I'm in a plane later with my SH Dell from three years ago flying to another state. After landing, I had a meeting with the manager guy, who had traveled the day before to the main company, and was leaving just after I arrived looking like he was escaping prison. I made sure to take most of the trip, visited town, ate out and brought presents to my then-girlfriend, now wife, met the people working with the director, every one of them nice including the director, which I discovered was actually a manager and my manager was a coordinator, but to boost his ego he lied to everybody, his family included. The director of our sector was actually a guy so high up he was basically impossible to reach. While I was there I had a few meetings with our director, the IT department and someone from the team working that previously worked on the projects we were supposed to take on. Working on another project, what a surprise. The team was so nice to me that it made me feel kinda bad for fumbling my part of the project. Anyway, I gathered more useful information and contacts in four days than in two months and some working with my manager. But I was enjoying myself too much. Friday comes and I managed to convince them that I needed to work the Saturday to be able to complete the project. Flight rescheduled the next day. Some early morning vacation time and I come in to work at 10 a.m. Director gets there 11 a.m. and manager was sending me messages since 8 in the morning. I make up something about data migration problems and say I can't finish it. Hop in a taxi and take my flight home 2 in the afternoon. My connection is delayed. My plan can't land from bad weather and I get home 10 p.m. But it didn't bother me a bit. I rarely fly and I love it. And because of that, the company had to pay me the full weekend of overtime. Not only the Saturday. And my wife got me on the airport. So we had a nice pizza by the beach late night. It was already great. Comes Monday and I, fully knowing what was going to happen, woke up 9 a.m., drive to the smelly office, and get there two healthy hours late. He hated it when people got late. I go to his desk, return the bag they gave me to carry the elderly Dell, and he asks me to sit down, and he proceeds to whip out some papers triumphantly, and starts to say something like, you know we have responsibilities, and three months ago, that's when my phone rings. I excuse myself and go into the hallway. Not fully closing the office door, I proceed to have the most satisfying call of my life. Yes, of course. I accept. I'll be there next Monday. I didn't tell it before, but during my two weeks vacation I had an interview for another company, and they were calling to make me an offer for more than twice the salary the current company was paying. So I come in again, and he proceeds to try and give me a lecture again. I cut him off saying, I get that you're firing me. I have to make some arrangements to start in my new job next Monday. Could you please cut this short? I sign the paper and leave the building. Later that week I had to go back there to retrieve some documents. I'm invited in by the receptionist. He's waiting at his desk, produces a contract and says I have to sign that to receive my documents. I read it and by the dates notice it's something he forgot to make me sign, because of the two weeks of illegal labor. I tell him I will not sign that, and he tells me he won't give me my documents back. I then proceed to once again be very satisfied, and tell him that if he withholds my documentation, I'm suing not only for the withholding, but for the two weeks of unregistered work, and all the hours of excessive overtime. That is a thing here. He tells me it's not his fault. It's the company's and gives my document back. Some weeks later I learned that after I left, they had to work for a weekend to create a makeshift solution for what I left, and they couldn't read. The other developer left some months after, and the main company sold them to another company that dismantled their business, and moved it to another state. I don't know what happened to that dude, but I heard that he was fired soon. He worked there for over 10 years, and is now making someone else's life hell in some startup and whatnot. I know I could have sued. Several people tried convincing me to go ahead, but my new job was so great. The last story is, defame me in front of my coworkers and patrons, enjoy your bills. A bit over a month or so ago, I was looking for a new home. 
I was having trouble finding a place that allowed pets, as I have a pet bird. Only just found out today that most places don't care if you have a bird. So imagine how happy I was when this bloke comes in and tells me that he'd asked my coworkers in the bar if they knew anyone who was looking to rent, and he came over to our bottle shop to offer me a place. He owned the house himself so the rent was cheap. I would pay no bond. It was literally a two minute walk from work. I could have my bird, etc, etc. How could I pass that up? So I moved in the following week. I could tell this guy was a bit weird, but he was a truck driver so he'd be out of the house for four or five days of the week anyway, so who cares, right? As time went on, however, it became clear that he was very strange and a complete control freak. I had some friends over to drink with me one night and found that he had put all of our bottles away in the cupboards in the time it took for us to go outside for a smoke and come back in. He expected the taps on the washing machine to only be turned on whilst it was in use. All appliance to be turned off and unplugged when not in use, to wash every single dish or piece of cutlery as you used it. Huge waste of water. And the list goes on. He had told me from the beginning that the bird was fine, and had even told me that he was used to the noise, and that it didn't bug him when I had apologized once earlier on when my bird had a little bit of a tantrum. Then just over a week ago, immediately after he made sure to get my rent money off me, he told me that he was sick of the bird, and gave me two weeks to leave. Now, this was infuriating enough as it was. However, it's his house, and he can do with it as he pleases. I kept quiet, didn't complain, just accepted it, and immediately started organizing inspections and applications for a new place the same night. I asked if it was okay, as it's rare to get approved for a rental in two weeks where I am, if I could have longer if need be. He quite smugly pointed out that we had no written contract, mate. I could have the police come here and drag you out tomorrow if I wanted to. Although that comment caused me to become immediately consumed by the rage of a thousand suns, I had managed to keep my mouth shut again and move on. The final straw, however, was when this bloke had the balls to come into the pub the next afternoon and start to try and bag me out of the same two staff members who had put him onto me in the first place. In the middle of happy hour, surrounded by numerous regulars that all know me, as I've been working here for over three years. The girls told me they had essentially ignored him for the rest of the night, besides pouring his drinks. This made me so angry that I had an episode. I've had anger management issues thanks to several underlying mental health issues all my life, and if I'm made angry enough, I can be prone to outbursts. So I spent the next two hours in the backyard chopping up old firewood until I felt better. I decided that I couldn't let this go though, so I started scheming. Seeing as old mate was so smug pointing out the fact that we had no written contract and had gone back on his word, I figured I would do the same and not contribute anything to power, gas, or water bills. However, given that he'd gone out of his way to be a turd, so would I. So since the day he tried to defame me at work, I've been running the washing machine, dryer, shower, sinks, aircon, fans, lights, stereo, TV, etc. at full blast all day, and all night while he's away. So the smug bee will be left with three significantly inflated bills that I'll be paying none of. Tough bickies, pal. Sucks when you can't rely on people not to be petty, eh? I hope you enjoyed these stories. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.